It's a pretty miserable day today here in Hatboro, Pennsylvania. So I thought that we would do some science. How about it? Spin the blue wheel of death, and let's get going. Alright folks, first thing I should mention here is that, as if you've been watching my other videos, I've been working on uh, making my own custom water blocks. Uh, that has been put on hold for the time being because I ordered a CNC machine to take care of that. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that to be shipped, we're going to be uh, working on how, to, how we're going to nickel plate it once the copper blocks are done. So what I did was I, on the Inv uh, Instructables website, they show you how to make your own nickel plating solution. Um, however, I took it to, uh, to eBay and I actually found this stuff on there. This is 35 bucks comes in a uh, crystal form. It's like a, it's basically the nickel plating solution that you need basically dehydrated. Um, you basically mix it with some clean distilled water and then you get your solution. Uh, well, but now when I got it, it does come with, the guy actually did include a whole bunch of safety measures. Uh, you know, it's nickel sulfate. It's pretty toxic and hazardous, so you really should follow these instructions and precautions. Um, there's in a little bit of a diagram, of course, you know, what you should do. Um, basically what happens is you have your solution. It's basically got your nickel particles in the, in the solution. And then you hook up what were your, your, the option to be plated to the negatives to to a negative power source and then you have an anode which is made out of nickel as well that's hooked up to the positive and then it goes into the solution goes into the solution and basically this solution is electrically conductive so that way the theory is, is that since electricity flows from positive to negative you've got the positive on this side and then the, so the, the electricity is going to flow this way through the item that you are nickel plating so, every, so every, all the nickel in the solution is going to come with it and attach itself to your item to be plated now listen, that's how it actually gets plated uh, what, I did, what I ended up doing here is I do a lot of water cooling and carrying around a second power supply or doing the whole jump the 24 pin. It got kind of tedious, so I bought this guy. I got this really cheap. It's it was I think it was like 15 bucks. Basically it plugs into the wall and you have a Molex on the other end and then I just use this for um, you know bleeding out cooling systems. The only thing I didn't like about this is it was basically you plug it in and then you have to real quickly unplug it before the, uh, the reservoir runs dry. So I modified it. I opened it up and I added an on and off switch to the ground side. And basically what I did was I took a I took some, some wire. The Both insides are, are negative. The yellow one is 12 volt. The red one is 5 volt. Basically all I did was I hooked it up to that. So it hooks into here like this with the evil Molex. And then you have your positive and negatives alligator clips on the other end. I put a uh, zip tie on the negative just so that way I know which one is negative. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up together and we're going we're to pour it in here and then we're going to put our items in here and we'll see how this goes. So be back in a sec. Okay, and we're back. I have mixed this all up. There seems to be a little bit that won't dissolve, so I'm going to assume that he just, you know, overweighted, overweighted a little bit. Now, what you are supposed to be using is approximately 3 volts. Now, I'm using the 5 volt side of a Molex connector, so what I did is I'm using this large, this is glass, it's larger, it's longer, so that way there's more distance in between, and that's going to increase the resistance. So hopefully it'll lower the voltage down a little bit, and uh, we'll get a good plate. So, without further ado, 
Let's go ahead and pour this stuff in. Now the instructions do say that this stuff is, you know, more or less reusable. Uh, I guess depending on how much nickel is left in the solution. So I'm going to see if we can get a little closer shot of this for you guys. Okay. Now, go ahead and turn the pulp, turn the power on. Let's put this in. Now, I've never done this before, so I have no idea how long it's going to take and what's going to happen. But I can already see, if you guys can see that, there we go. You can see it's already starting to bubble, which basically means that it is plating. The electricity is transferring from one side to the other. and it is going through my copper wire that we have in there. So, I'm going to leave this sit here for a few minutes and we're going to be back with our results. Be back in a bit. Okay folks, it has been five minutes. Let's go ahead and take this out and see what we got. Wow, look at that. I'm going to use a pair of pliers because this stuff is apparently pretty toxic here. Okay, so let's see if we can get the focus in on this here. Okay, let's try this. There we go, that's better. As you can see, we actually have our plating. This is what it looked like before, and this is after. We actually have a successful plate. Now supposedly this is easy to polish up, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay folks, here we are. We're back. Look at this. This is before, bare copper, and this is after. I would call this a success. Let's see if we can get this a little bit closer for you guys. Just to focus, uh, focus on that thing. There we go. Look at that. Look at the difference there. Before and after plating. It's, this, was, this was only about five minutes in the solution. I think maybe if I popped it in there for another five more minutes, I think this would look really, really nice. Now, I also did sand this copper before I put it in can't see it on the camera really but you actually can a little bit there's a little bit of a grainy to it because I used a, uh, a rough grit sandpaper a fine grit sandpaper just to clean off the uh, the surface there and I think it would have turned out perfect I think once I get that CNC machine in and get them blocks milled up this is gonna be a great success so here's just one more arse thing in my arsenal of abilities guys so if you want anything custom made, you know anybody that wants any custom made, just tell them, yo, I know this guy on YouTube, he, he does all kinds of stuff. He's always willing to try something. But keep that in mind, guys. It's all coming soon. So as soon as that CNC machine comes, the, uh, the mini ITX build is going to come together real quick. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Like and subscribe if you like it. You know what to do if you don't. This is Den out for another one. Till next time.